Okay, so another presentation about wayfinding. Oh my gosh. Um, so mine is, I'm going to start it with a question. How do you find your way to a place you've never been? Does anybody know how? <laughs> I ask somebody who's been there before. Okay. Um, what if it's, oops, sorry? Google Maps. Yeah. Google Maps, okay. <laughs> what if it's in a city you've never been to before? Google okay, <laughs> and what if you can't spell the name for some reason? <laughs> okay, so um, my my idea for my project came out of my experience from when I was living in Korea for a year, and um, I was teaching English there, um, and the a large number uh, a large amount of the English population in these areas is very short term residents who are there for one or two years. Um, they don't usually go in with any knowledge of Korean, so they can't use a lot of the Korean resources for finding information. And there's a lot of disparate information sources um, for trying to find your way around the city because um, it doesn't actually work with Google Maps and trying to get information. Even if you do have the Korean spelling of the place, they can't give you information on how to get places. So um, my idea was kind of like about wayfinding in new cities for people who are new residents, maybe they don't have connections with people who've been there for a long time. Um, sometimes your wayfinding skills when you go into a new city don't always apply. My way of getting around in Toronto is completely different from how I get around in Jeonju because they, the cities aren't organized the same way. And not, even, even when I'm in Toronto, which is somewhere I've recently moved, um, the way I got around in my hometown was completely different from how I have to get around in Toronto because living in downtown Toronto is a very different experience from growing up in small town Innisfil. So um, I wanted to kind of approach this idea of building new skills for way making and way finding and how we can help people build those skills. Um, So how can we teach people to find a new way around their city? Um, this is not a great graphic, I guess. It's too small. I'm sorry. But the idea is that um, what my concrete project would be an online way-making education resource using user-generated content. So it would have to be online because <coughs> location is like spread out across different places, obviously. Um, the main idea here is bringing in a lot of different um, theories and making them into concrete um, guidelines for user-generated content. That's basic. So why would I use user-generated content? Um, this is a map of two, two different routes going from Guelph to Innisfil. Um, it's a trip that I've made many times over years and for a long time I did just use the Google Maps version where you go down the 400 and then across the 401 because that's the first option that it gave to me and that's the one that I had done several times and it was the one that worked until one of my friends told me why don't you take the back roads they're much faster there's no stoplights there's no traffic to deal with this is the kind of insider knowledge that I needed to know that there's a way much faster way to take this trip that I do every couple of weeks um, and the difference is that according to Google Maps if you go the speed limit it's much faster to take the highways. But that doesn't take into the account the difference between traffic and the back roads that have a much nicer view and is a much more pleasant experience if you're doing this drive all the time. So insider knowledge is something that you can only really get through user-generated content and people inputting their own knowledge, which is different from the information that we would get out of something like a computer program. Okay. Uh, oh, and on a smaller scale, like an inside a city, that's even more difficult to see the difference between those problems. So if I, was, if I was looking at just this Google Maps, I could say, oh, that one's on the highway, then I know that there would be traffic issues. But um, again, if we're looking at just inside of a new city, then that's a much smaller scale issue, like Sunday traffic in Kensington Market would be something that you'd have to know about because you live in Toronto. So, um, so the ideas for sorting the contents that people will be putting in originally come from um, Lynch's Image of the City, which is 
one of the first sources for wayfinding, um, one of the first books about wayfinding, and it sorts um, geographic concepts into different ideas, like nodes, which are um, points, basically. Um, so that would kind of be a convergence of several different paths or something. Um, edges, districts, paths, landmarks. So these are all just different ways to classify um, the ways you think about landmarks and locations and how you move through a space. Um, and in the book he talks about um, how even a new, user, a new resident of a city will think of landmarks that are large and distant like the CN Tower. Whereas someone who's lived in Toronto for a long time might think about um, a specific building or a statue or the house with the red shutters as a landmark for guiding their way through a path. And we want to be able to have residents move much quicker from CN Tower to House with the Red Shadows, because that way they can understand where they're going much easier. And they won't have to constantly rely on Google Maps to get somewhere. Um, we, I would also want to sort the contents based on um, some educational theories, because this is a res resource to help people develop their own ideas, learn to do this on their own. Um, and if it's going to be online, then it will be a multimedia resource. So um, it would be module-based, so that people can only just do a little bit of learning and then move on to a different module. Um, dividing this learning into sections so that it's more understandable in small pieces. Um, it would have to combine words, images, and experience so that people can um, get a greater understanding for different learning styles. And a flexible structure would allow the users to take control of their learning. This isn't a dictated course that they're taking. This is something where they're exploring the website the same way they're exploring the city. Um, they should have control over what they're getting. Um, in the end, it would also be a dual modeling process. So as people are learning their wayfinding skills from first entering the website, understanding this is where my house is in relation to the bank that I need to go to. Um, they're, they're going to be observing these wayfinding skills that are put in front of them by the modules. They're also learning how to use the website, um, finding their way through the website, and learning how the modules are organized, um, how the different landmarks are sorted into different categories, such as um, nodes and paths. And then um, part of their education process is becoming a user of their site and contributing content. So after observing wayfinding, they move into waymaking. They develop their own path to go from a landmark to their grandmother's house that they go to all the time. And they say, this could be useful for someone else. And then they can contribute their own module. And in doing that, they move into the content formation part of the website use. So um, in this point, they start learning by teaching, which is another really good way to develop mastery. <laughs> um, so just to kind of go over this once more, um, it might seem a little bit redundant in the face of Google Maps that is kind of taking over our, um, our navigation for everyone. Like your instant answer if you're going to a new city is always Google Maps or GPS. But um, many people are reliant on online maps and directions, and when they can't use them, their way of finding their way breaks down completely. So we want to move that from people absorbing information into people absorbing knowledge. We want to add the human connection. Um, and learning to navigate a city for a lot of people involves getting lost and finding their way home. And that's a lot of anxiety and panic that shouldn't be part of getting to know a new city. You want to have good memories. Um, so then I do have some questions that I'll come back to in a second, but um, there's the credits just so you know they're right there. Um, so what elements of the underlying theory should be visible to people? How cognizant should they be of the paths versus nodes versus districts and edges? Should those be keywords that they're using in their dialogues, or should it just be an underlying structure that they don't see? Um, what could the user interface look like? It's kind of, because it's a contribu contribution-based project, it's 
a little bit in like a wiki, I guess, but I don't know how much like a wiki it should look or if it should be more polished or Tumblr-like. What would be more appealing? And um, how can we incorporate anecdotes and emotions so that the way making becomes sort of more faster, I guess? How can we make it more human-centered? And those are things that I'm thinking about. Maybe you have ideas to help. I don't really know what I'm doing with the map. Okay. <laughs>